Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Today I thought I would show you a detail I've actually never shown how to do here on the channel, although I've done it a few times over on Patreon, and that is how to add a cowl neckline to the basic bodice block pattern. This is actually a pretty simple modification to make and there are many variations of this. You can do a higher neck, a lower cowl if you want to. You can do a cowl in the front and the back, although then you do need to do something about securing the shoulders to your bra strap so that it doesn't just floop right off. But you need one side basically to hold up the cowl because of course if this is just floopy on both sides the whole thing is going to fall off which can be desirable in some instances as well. But like I said a very easy modification so we'll jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom and get started. Now I said basic bodice block but I'm going to be starting with my all-in-one bodice block for this. Um, it's basically the same it's just that one of my darts on my black version of my block here has been made into the all-in-one sleeve. This process for adding the cowl neckline would be the same for either um, this all-in-one sleeve version or the regular set in sleeve like sleeveless block so same idea just uh this one is going to have a grown on sleeve as it were but i'm going to mark in my waist dart that i still have here on this because i will be taking half of this dart fullness away and putting it into my cowl neckline and i want to mark where my shoulder would be on this pattern up along the shoulder seam sleeve seam area here i'm going to draw a line perpendicular from the center front to the apex point here and then i'm going to find the uh, middle between that and the neckline uh, point up here. I'm going to come out an inch and a half along the shoulder and connect that down to create this sort of V neckline. This is how low my cowl neck will be at its very lowest. And then between that I'm going to come in a half inch from the shoulder point and connect that with a curved line down to that center point, uh, that point out from the apex along the center front, and then draw a second curved line in between that and my new angled neckline here. I will cut along that neckline to start with. Then I'm going to cut up these curved lines to the shoulder Again, this is very, very simple, I promise. And of course you can throw more or less dart fullness into this. Um, you can open up this, you can open this up less or more depending on how much cowling you want, how much drape your fabric has. Um, today my fabric doesn't have a ton of drape to it. I'm not gonna be adding a massive amount of cowl to this. I'm gonna close my waist dart about halfway here and take a spare piece of paper that we can tape this all down onto and just draw in my new dart legs here to the apex. Obviously my actual dart legs will be an inch and a quarter down from that because we don't actually sew our darts all the way straight to the apex unless we want something very pointy. I'm gonna line up the center front of this on a straight line here on my spare piece of paper, tape down that new little dart that's opened up into the center front here that's half our dart fullness from the waist is going to be moved into that center front here. Now these pieces we're going to move upwards until this line that like that V neckline we drew is perpendicular to the um, like exactly 90 degrees to the center front and I'm going to tape that down and the other piece just kind of gets split in between that so we have these two large curved wedges of fullness being added here along the neckline like so and where these tips cross over the center front that's just going to get cut off here and we don't need them anymore so you just get rid of those and it's nice to have this straight line across the top of where this will cowl down because you can just do a facing that's kind of grown on here you don't have to have a separate front facing piece you can just have a like fold back facing so i'll show you that here in just a moment cut away some of my spare paper here so yes we can fold along this line since it's 90 degrees to the um, center front here draw in the shoulder line here and just cut that off like so and then we can shape this extra piece here this flap to be our front facing i'm going to have that be two and a half inches deep here at the uh, shoulder seam basically and then i'll make it about four four and a half inches deep at the center front just a little bit of extra space also a little bit of extra weight in that facing which will help help hold our cowl neck down in place when this is on the body later on you can also sew like a weight or uh, like a penny or something like that into the bottom of your cowl neck to help hold it tucked in but with a deeper facing like that it should be okay this is going to be cut on the fold with the center front along the fold along the fold of bias as well so along a 45 degree angle i'll show you that when i cut this out of my fabric later on but yes it was just that simple to add that cowl neck line onto the front of this bodice pattern here of course i'm going to need to trace a copy of the back as well and make sure that the shoulder seam will still match up because we did come out that one and a half inches along the neckline of the shoulder we need to make sure that our back pattern will match up as well with the new front so I'm just going to raise my neck back neckline on this piece just a little bit because my bodice block necklines are always a little bit low in the back for some reason but again come out about one and a half inches smooth that off as much as I can I came up about a half inch along my back neckline here I think I'm dancing to the music here in the background which you can only see in shadow form thankfully to make sure this still lines up along my side seam here i did come out a tiny bit on the sleeve length for the front piece so i wanted to add that on here as well making sure my shoulder still matches up so just walking those seams and then i will go ahead and trace a back facing for this as well just going to 
grab a spare piece of paper, put that on top of my pattern. That's why I like having this translucent paper. It's super useful. And I'm just going to make that two and a half inches wide as usual for me. And uh, I could have made this a little bit wider to match up with the front better, uh, just because the front facing doesn't need seam allowance removed from it because it's already there. So I should have technically made the front facing only two inches at the shoulder or made this only or, or made this a uh, half inch wider. You'll see what I mean later when we're sewing this. Let me just go ahead and cut this out. Um, but these are the main pieces I need for my bodice. This is all because, of course, the sleeve is grown on, so I don't need a sleeve piece. It's already ready to go. And I will just be using my regular pencil skirt pattern, my basic block skirt, um, which is a tracing of my yeah blocks. This is just a standard pencil skirt pattern that I made here on the channel. You can see how I make these in this video, and I put it up in a card here. But I'm just going to be using a tracing of that as the skirt for this dress today, and then sewing this bodice onto that. And that will be our dress. But we've gone from our basic all-in-one to having a cowl neck along the front. Again, you can do that same cowl neck modification to uh, any bodice pattern, really, unless something is very funky and strange. But any basic bodice pattern, you should be able to do that kind of modification to, no problem. Now I have this paneled, sort of pixelated gradient woven jacquard polyester fabric from moodfabrics.com. Um, if I could get this in a wool, I'd be very happy, but it was in polyester, but it's a pixelated gradient and I had to have it. So I only grabbed about two yards of this. I think it's two panels. You can see it's kind of woven um, with this line down the middle of it. So I have to be careful cutting this out. But for the front of this uh, piece, I need to cut it out again on the 45 degree angle. So I have my fabric folded along that 45 degree angle along one corner so that I can cut this uh, like perfectly on the bias grain like so. So I'm pinning my front piece on the bias like this, which means my gradient will go at an angle across this, which is kind of fun. Just piecing this on this fabric as best I could to arrange the gradient. I wanted, if I could, to have the darker part of the gradient at my waist and then it fade to lighter up at my neckline and down to the hem. So that was kind of my goal here. This fabric is opposite, so it's light to dark on one side and then dark to light on the other. So I kind of have to be careful about what I'm doing. Uh, like both sides are the same, it's just they are in reverse. So careful cutting here, careful cutting. But I'll cut my backs so that they will kind of coordinate with the front like so. And this is cut on the straight grain as opposed to bias because there's no need, there's no cowl on the back, so I don't need to cut it on the bias. Use this little scrap here to cut out some facings maybe, if I can fit it on. I'm trying to use up little bits of fabric if possible or whenever possible. I did just think this fabric is quite fun, although it does some interesting things here on camera. Uh, like looking up, looking at it up close, it's a little bit look, like looking at a composition notebook pattern or something like that. If you know what I'm talking about, these notebooks, you know, where if you look at them too long, it starts becoming a bit of a Rorschach test or something. You know what I mean. But this other half of the fabric here, I will use to cut out my pencil skirt here, the pencil skirt portion of my dress. I'm not going to line this dress today because I thought that this jacquard uh, would be like thick enough to not need a lining um, and stable enough. And I wanted to be able to just throw this in the wash. And if I lined it with rayon, then it would become kind of dry clean only. So eh. in the end, I think this would have been helped by a lining. It would have given it a little bit more of a uh, finer finish, I think, and would have helped the drape of it in the end, but, but alas, sometimes, you know, I forgo a lining. It's true. I've been lining things more often recently because I'm trying to step up my clothing game and make things that are a little bit more, I don't know, not heirloom quality, but on the, on the heirloom quality side of things. I do want to make sure that these, uh, skirt panels are at the same level so that they match up with the gradient along the side seam, by the way. So that is something I'm thinking about here, making sure to have these right next to one another so that the gradient matches up along the side seam of the dress. Something to remember when working with fabrics like this, although gradient fabrics are not that common, which is a shame because they are quite nice. All right, now that I have all my pieces cut out, I can go ahead and mark my darts on these, starting with the back pieces here. Grab all my pins out of there, decide which side is the outside, which side is the inside. It's gonna be the inside here with the light uh, lighter side of the fabric against my waist. <laughs> Hard to keep track of these things. Hopefully I'm not messing anything up, you know? And even in, this fabric is so busy up close that it's hard to see the markings. It's impossible to see them here on camera, but it was hard to see them in reality. So I was trying to use my colored pencils and I ended up going straight to Crayola washable marker so that I can actually see what the heck I'm doing because it's not showing up on camera at all, but it's also just not showing up from, you know, eight inches away looking at it either. So I had to <laughs> resort to my washable markers. It's uh, kind of my last resort, but it works and technically will wash out. Also, it didn't bleed through to the other side at all, so eh, you can't see it anyhow. Pin those darts in place, just of course these two darts across the back. And then I'll have my little darts on the front as well, since I left half of my waist dart in along the front too. The more dart fullness you include into the cowl neck, the more it like tips it out and gives you a lot more cowling in the front. 
So if you wanted to put all of your dart fullness into the cowl, you definitely can, depending on how much a drape of a floop that you're looking for. And I will, of course, need to put my skirt darts markings in here as well. And oh my goodness, are my cuticles stained from tie-dye in this video. Oof. Uh, they're, they're actually looking kind of okay right now, although I do have to wash out a couple of tie-dye pieces after I'm done recording this voiceover. So it's about to get back to this sad, sad stained cuticle state here that we see. If my hands weren't so dry, it wouldn't stain so badly. Or if I just, you know, bought more gloves, which I should, but uh, I, I haven't. But I will go ahead and again, draw in my darts and pin all of those for my waist on my skirt front here. And then of course I will have to do the darts for the skirt back as well. And then eventually we'll get to the front. All right, here's my front piece, and I can kind of see where my darts need to be down here. Go ahead and mark those, being careful to mark them on the back. Ooh, so easy to get turned around with this fabric, like so. And again, I will draw that in with my marker in a minute. And then the facing on this front, of course, just folds down, so I don't have to worry about that at all. Just have these little darts to sew in here at the waist. Half of my life is spent sewing darts, as we know. I like a fitted garment out of a woven fabric. So, and it has been very nice to be back to my wovens after that little break with knits. <sighs> I do prefer sewing with wovens on my lovely old Singer 99K as opposed to that Burnett machine that doesn't like me <clears throat> and knit fabrics that don't like me much either. Although I do need to make some crushed velvet dresses. So I have some knits sitting here in the studio that I need to get to, but we'll see when I have the time because things are getting very hairy with my schedule here. Uh, here in the sewing room <laughs> uh, because I have a trip coming up here. I'm going on, uh, I guess it's a vacation. I plan to film a couple of days, but mostly it's a vacation to London, England here shortly. So I will be out of office, but you won't notice a difference because there will still be videos going up, no problem, while I'm away. And of course, yes, I will be filming a little bit of stuff to share with you and show you all of my favorite spots in London because it's my favorite city and I haven't been in over a decade. So I decided that that was um, uh, unacceptable. That I hadn't been to my favorite place in the world, or at least that I found so far in over a decade. So I, 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 have to, I have to go. Also, I think now is the time to travel before I have my own house because I don't need anyone to do any house sitting for me. So now is the time. I don't have to find a cat sitter yet because my parents will just take care of our kitties and then I can go and travel. And then when I come back, things are gonna be even more stressful, honestly, as I start looking for a house, so. It's a big, strange year for me. Thank you for sticking with me and for honestly making it all possible by watching my videos, so thank you. But yes, just sewing all of my darts over here on the machine. You've seen me sew many a dart now at this point. Of course, I have an entire video about darts. If you're curious about them, you can feel free to check that out here. And I will just go ahead and press my darts using the end of my ironing board over here on the other side of the sewing room. This ironing board cover has already been so destroyed. I think I got this a couple of years ago and it's already got snips, holes, burns, stains. All, the, all that jazz going on over here. We'll need a better ironing board in my next sewing room anyhow, so I don't think I'll be keeping this one for anything except for as an extra one. And even, even then, it may not be worthy of being my spare. Give this skirt front a quick press as well while I'm over here. And just keep pressing my darts. Uh, I always press my darts towards the center front or center back, depending on if I'm working on the front or the back. That's just how I was taught and how I pattern, pattern draft my things. Some people were taught to have their darts towards the sides. Uh, whatever works for you, whatever you're used to, as long as you keep it consistent, I think it's, you know, better. Obviously, if they're not all going different directions. And then because I'm not lining this, I will go ahead and run all these pieces through my serger. Any edge that's not going to be hemmed, I will go ahead and serge uh, just the raw edges to make sure that nothing unravels eventually on this buddy, especially because it's a jacquard and it tends to want to unravel a little bit. Um, not terribly, but like I've, I've worked with worse, but it's not great either. But the sleeve edges, like where the sleeves will be hemmed, I won't bother serging that or the bottom um, edge of the skirt as well because I'll just be turning those twice and hemming them eventually anyhow. So no need to serge them because it's just gonna add a little bit of bulk where I don't need it. You can kind of see the pixelated pattern of this fabric better up close like this. It is a tiny bit translucent when held to the light, but I would wear this over a slip anyway, so I'm not worried about it. All right, let me go ahead and get some fusible interfacing on my back facing pieces here just to give them a little bit more stability. I will do some understitching on this as well, just to make sure that these stay flipped into the back side of my dress. Uh, since the front will be have that floopy cowl, I want the back to have a little bit more structure. 
for that all to hang off of kind of for the weight of the front neckline to be placed on something with a little bit more structure connected at the shoulder of course so just some lightweight fusible thrown on there real fast and then i can go ahead and sew my side seams of my skirt pieces here i kind of like to construct my bodice and my skirt separately and then sew them together along the waist depending on you know the order of operations needed depending on the style or design of my garments i was working on a jacket recently over on patreon where i needed to sew all of the side seams of the top of the garment and the skirt of the garment first before I sewed them to the longer uh like front and back panels so I don't know how my brain like for some reason my brain now does know how to just put things together without instructions uh I think you know 15 years ago I did not know how to do things intuitively that way but now my brain kind of just works in garment construction <laughs> that's just how my brain I, I again I can never explain the geometry but for some reason it is somehow installed I got like the matrix going on in my brain where I just like downloaded garment construction somehow after just years and years and years of making so many things. So also I don't tend to make absolutely very complex garments often. So um, that's where I'm more likely to make mistakes, honestly, but simple things like this where it's just, you know, a bodice front and back and a skirt front and back. It's only six pieces, uh, not counting the facing. So I can't get too turned around now, can I? I am just using my half inch seam allowance, Guterman all purpose thread over here on the machine and my uh, 12 stitches branch, which is a pretty small stitch length that I prefer. And then again, yes, I will clip my curves of my facing and then put some understitching in along that facing here, like so, uh, basically stitching the seam allowance down to the facing side here, which just helps it keep, helps keep it rolled into the inside when I iron these buddies in place later. Well, not later, right now. <laughs> later for me in the time of making this, but not later for us in the timeline of editing the video. But I don't actually need these uh, ironed down yet because I need to attach them to the front here. Um, again, I got a little confused as to why this was so long. The other thing too is that the shoulder seam on the back is cut on the straight grain. The shoulder seam on the front is cut on the bias, so it has stretched a little. So I need to kind of steam and ease the front piece into the back piece here along the shoulder line because that front piece has stretched a little being on the bias. If you move it around at all, it will start to move out of place. So bias has a lot more fluidity to it, which is why we're using it for the cowl neck to drape nicely. But it also does mean that sometimes your seams will stretch a little. I'm just, you can see me like scooching things along with my fingers to make sure this fits down into the back. Because we cut it out with the same length of pattern, we know it fits. I just have to kind of uh, coerce and <laughs> convince the front to fit down into the back shoulder seam again, and just give that a little bit of steam with the iron as well. And it'll fall back into place, no problem. And I can go ahead and stitch that over here on the machine. And again, my front facing on this, the fold back facing is a half inch longer than this back facing just because I didn't plan accordingly <laughs> when drafting those things. I always use two and a half inch wide facings, but of course the front one is grown on instead of having to be sewn on. So I don't lose that half inch for uh, seam allowance. It's just there extra. So eh, it's fine. I'm just gonna tack that down here at the shoulder seam anyhow, right there, eventually. Again, these stitches would be completely lost in this print of the fabric, so no one will ever know that's there. And I can go ahead and do the other side the exact same way. All right, once again, give that a nice press fold down that facing to the inside along that shoulder seam and I will tack it along this shoulder seam Bloop, like so pin that down right here for now and then I can tack it later and our cowl neck is starting to come together a little bit here so you can kind of see it looks straight across but once you put it on a 3d form it starts to drape into the cowl neck that we are looking for but I need to go ahead and sew my side seams of the bodice now so this underarm slash side seam for my all-in-ones as I always say, I like to sew these with a regular half inch seam allowance and then narrow the seam allowance right at the curve of the underarm to a quarter inch if I don't wanna have to clip this seam. So that's basically what I'm gonna do here. Half inch and then I narrow right here at the curve to a quarter inch and then back out to a half. Hopefully that makes any sense. If you've watched a bunch of my videos, you've seen me do a lot of all-in-one sleeves because it is my favorite style of like garment sleeve. Uh, I just think it creates a really nice triangular bodice shape that really again helps the illusion of narrowing the waist for an hourglass look to have the wider kind of shoulder with these uh all-in-one sleeves give those a quick press over my tailor's ham 
I'm starting to look like a bodice a little bit here. I'm going to go ahead and just hem my sleeves at this point because I didn't want them to fray any further. I'm going to turn those under in on themselves twice a quarter of an inch and pin that in place. And then I think I just hand stitch these real quick off camera. Sorry about that. But again, hand stitching in this fabric uh, or most things in this fabric, you cannot see what I'm doing. This is not a good fabric for filming a tutorial because it's impossible to see what's going on in this pixelated print, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's not solid black, so that's a rarity for me. So pros and cons, pros and cons. But I will go ahead now that my bodice is finished, other than, of course, the back closure, um, and my skirt is finished, other than the back closure and the hem, I can go ahead and attach these buddies at the waistline. So matching up my darts, matching up my side seams, all relevant information that can be matched shall be matched. And I can go ahead and stitch these together along the waist. like so. A little bit of back stitching at the start and end, of course. And I will go ahead and press that open using my hands as a clapper because it was still chilly down here in the basement. So, you know, allow me this one. You're used to it. Um, and it's time to start thinking about putting a zipper in the back of this. I am going to throw some interfacing in the back of this first, though, because this fabric is still... like It can't decide if it's structured or floopy, and it's more on the floopy side. So I will go ahead and throw some interfacing along the center back openings of this on each side. Um, so that's what I'm doing. I'm off camera. <laughs> cutting some interfacing real quick to throw in here. I wonder if you can buy fusible interfacing that's like two inches wide on a roll, like a ribbon of it. Probably. I'm sure they make it for industrial purposes, so somewhere out there they have it. Would be super useful to have two inches wide like this or like one inch wide pieces of interfacing that are like on a roll. I'll have to look into it. Iron that down onto the back of my garment here. I do have a video all about how I set in my lapped zippers now, so I can go ahead and put a card up to that video here if you'd like to hear me explain in a little more detail exactly how I like to put zippers in, but you'll be seeing the process a little bit here today again. Although in that video, at least I'm using muslin, which doesn't do funky things to the camera like this pixelated fabric does. But I'm going to see how long my zipper will come down along the skirt, and I'm going to sew from there to the top of where I want there to be a slit in the back of my skirt. I made that slit about eight or nine inches high here. So in between where the zipper ends and the start of the slit, I'm going to just sew this shunt with a one inch seam allowance along the back of this. That's just what I usually leave myself on the back center back of my garments because I usually put a zipper back there. And once again, I'm gonna mark this for myself with a marker because I couldn't see what was going on in this fabric. But yes, just stitch that closed with my regular stitch length um, and back stitching just to keep everything shut back here. You don't want your dress popping open right over your bum. That'd be the terrible place for a seam to split while you're wearing things out and about. So that's why I like relying on polyester thread because I, I feel it's strong and won't do that to me, hopefully. All right, and I will use that as a guide to press this back seam open all the way down past the slit area here and just put a couple of pins in that to hold that in place for now. Again, when I stitch the hem later, I will go ahead and tack this with some stitches as well. And then the rest of the back opening, I do need to fold back that same amount. So I'm just going to use my hem gauge here to do that and make sure both back edges are pressed nicely and firmly into place over their nice interfacing here that makes it crispy. And then I can set the zipper underneath this open seam area back here. I do always do lapped zippers. Some people prefer centered zippers, but uh, I'm just a, a lapped zipper uh, devotee, as it were. So that's what I always use. And I am just gonna put a gray zipper into this today because I think we can say that this, like if you squint your eyes, this dress is gray. It's really black, white, gray, all kinds of things going on here, but gray was the best match I could find. All right, get that under the zipper foot here over on the 99K. I have the zipper foot set so that I can stitch right close to the folded edge that I have pinned down next to the zipper teeth here. And so on this side of the zipper, I'm just gonna sew that real close to my teeth. Close to my teeth, not my teeth. Like not, not my actual teeth that I'm using to speak to you now, but the zipper teeth. You know what I mean. I almost thought I cracked a tooth the other day. While I was setting up the lighting for Saboteur, 
I um, got a cord of one of my lights hooked around the tripod of my camera while I was setting up the camera and uh, it I pulled on the cord too much and then the camera came timbering down. Unfortunately, my face was in the way, so I the DSLR camera hit me really hard in the upper lip on my like left-hand side of my lip, and it split the inside of my lip a little from the impact of it all, and I got a little tiny cut like under my nostril from the camera hitting me so hard. So for any of you who ever think that I might be elegant, it's all editing, um, not reality, because I am not an elegant or graceful human, I, I instead knock the cameras over into my face. But I just was like kneeling in a lot of pain thinking, that better not have cracked my tooth, that better not have cracked my tooth. And luckily, it did not. Knock on wood that I don't do that some other time though, so. I think it will help, uh, hopefully in my next living situation, if I have an area where my set is, is not also like a family basement with furniture everywhere. Um, because setting up around things sometimes adds to my level of clumsiness and messiness, so. To have a dedicated studio space that is only a back lot would be useful. <clears throat> I'm sewing the other side of my zipper here. Um, you get the idea. Again, check out my zipper video for a better explanation of how I do these, basically. Um, it is always still a thing where I'm holding my breath to make sure it works as well. Although I was actually quite pleased with how the zipper came out, so... Yeah. I will go ahead and clip off the extra zipper tape here, and then because this is nylon, I'll melt those in so they don't fray. How do you like that? pyrotechnics. That's right. And then I will fold these little bits of these facings down in here and pin those in place. Again, I will just hand tack those down to finish this nicely on the inside or as nice as I can without putting a lining in. Like so. And then all that's left here is to tack those down, tack these at the shoulder seam, and then hem this buddy. And then this dress will be finished. Now, originally I hemmed this by turning it up uh, like five eighths of an inch and then one inch uh, so I turned it twice, just like I had done for the sleeves, although the sleeves I had only turned it a quarter inch. And here, turning it a little bit more, it looked fine until I went to try this dress on, and then it looked absolutely awful. So I turned this twice, hand-stitched the hem, tried it on, and was disgusted by how poofy and weird it decided to hang. Um, and so I had to come in here, take all this hand-stitching out, and then I only turned it up once, like turned it up an inch, and that was it, and left this surged edge in here. So in the end, I did end up surging this. Originally, I hadn't. But I surged it, as you can see here, and tried turning it twice. But no, no, no. It needed to be turned once only, sadly. Um, so it's not the world's most elegant hem ever, if you're looking on the inside now. But I tried it this way, and it definitely didn't work. But with that, this dress is all finished. Here is my finished cowl neck dress in this lovely gradient polyester jacquard. I really like this fabric, but it did give me a couple of little problems, not with the cowl, but with the hem wasn't having it. So the hem gave me a little bit of trouble on this one. Probably could have been solved by having a lining in this as well, but I really wanted to make an unlined garment today. So eh, mostly it's fine. Just small little things that of course only will ever get to me. I hope you enjoyed seeing this project come together today and seeing how to add the cowl neckline onto the basic bodice block pattern. If you'd like to see me do other versions of cowl necks or similar necklines to this, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And I will keep that in mind when I'm choosing projects in the future. I do like to th keep things planned quite far out in advance. Uh, my calendar is usually filled in nearly a year in advance. Things move around, but I do have a lot of ideas, more ideas than I have time, as I always say. But of course, I'll be back with more sewing, vintage fashion, costuming, and crafting real soon, so I'll see you then. Bye.